Good morning, church. Good morning. Happy Sabbath day to everyone. How are you today? Good? We're happy and blessed that God has given us this privilege of worshiping Him um, without any hindrances. We still have the freedom of worship in our country. And uh, before we're going to review our lesson of the week, let us bow our heads for prayer. Our kind and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness and your love to each of us. Above all, thank you for the gift of salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Father God, we are going to study the life of Jesus as the Messiah and how John gave us an eye view of how Jesus came to this world and will be studying and reviewing this morning the witnesses account how they viewed Jesus when they first met him. Father God, I pray that as we study and review our lesson that we can see Jesus as what the witnesses have testified a long time ago. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. We're now in lesson four of our quarterly, and I believe that each of us has been blessed by what uh, we have learned and read so far. And before going further, I would like to welcome each of you to our Sabbath School lesson review this morning, and also to our online viewers. Thank you for um, uh, studying with us in our Sabbath school lesson. I pray that you will be blessed as we continue to study the book of John. Now, as we have studied earlier in the previous uh, lessons, John portrayed Jesus as the Son of God. He describes Jesus as the Messiah. And uh, he and the miracles or the signs that uh, John um, wrote all points to Jesus as the Son of God and Jesus as the Messiah. Now, can you remember the seven signs or the seven miracles recorded in the book of John? that we have so far studied in part or uh, has been brought to us in previous uh, lessons. The seven signs all pointing to Jesus as the Son of God and as the Messiah. Uh, the first miracle recorded in the book of John, uh, what the, the uh, turning of water into wine, the wedding at Cana. Then we have the feeding of uh, 5,000. We also have the healing of the blind man who was born blind. And also healing of the paralytic uh, uh, man in the pool of Bethsaida. And we have somewhere, but the crowning act of his sign of the sign that Jesus is the Messiah, is the raising up of Lazarus uh, from death to life. Those are the signs pointing to Jesus as the Messiah. So our uh, study for the week is about the witnesses of Christ as the Messiah. We will first study uh, four or five witnesses. In the little part of our lesson, lesson five onward, We'll be studying the other uh, witnesses testifying that Jesus is the Messiah. In Sunday's lesson, the testimony of John the Baptist. Now, we know about John the Baptist and how he, he was born. And um, by the way, just a review, who is John the Baptist? Who is John the Baptist? 
yep, uh, the cousin of Jesus. And aside from that, what, what else? Yep, the forerunner of Jesus. And aside from that also, uh, what, how can you still describe John the Baptist? Cousin, uh, the forerunner of Jesus. If that uh, when the teachers or the leaders of Israel went to him, he said that he is not the light, but he is pointing to the light, which is who is Jesus. Now, um, uh, so what Sister Kathy mentioned, they are cousins, uh, John and Jesus are cousins, but they have, I believe, they have not met. Because uh, Jesus was raised up in Nazareth, whereas uh, the book of John mentioned that uh, John the Baptist was uh, grew up in the wilderness. So at the time when uh, John, John the Baptist, was preaching and also baptizing the Jordan, the religious leaders were kind of trying to determine. Who is he? Right? Who is this person? Because they have not uh, met or they have not uh, met him as a student in their religious schools. And he just came up and preached the gospel of the kingdom. So they were, they were amazed. And the fact that Many people flock to him and believe him as a prophet. That kind of uh, in, in, uh, arouse their attention. Right? Uh, Brother Stab, you have a question? Uh, <coughs> it says that John the Baptist was preaching in the wilderness. But when we speak of the wilderness, it would be like a place that have no people. So what was the purpose? Is that a spiritual um, application there, or was he really in the wilderness? No, uh, he grew up in the wilderness, but as the lesson mentioned, that he was preaching in the Jordan. Uh, he was baptizing and preaching in the Jordan. I think the place is Tabata, which is, uh, I believe, close to uh, which is close, the part of Jordan, close to Judea. This, this would indicate that a lot of people passed by the way that he was baptizing them. Yeah, many, many, were, uh, many were attracted to the mission of John the Baptist because they thought that he's one of the old prophets. Uh, many believe that he was uh, Elijah the prophet. Now, at the time of Jesus... Some of the Jews believe that uh, there are two kinds of Messiah. One coming as a priestly Messiah and the other as a king or coming from a royal family. So those people uh, who believe John to be one or coming from a priestly family, they were interested and they came and flocked to the Jordan where uh, John the Baptist was baptizing. So when the religious leaders sent uh, messengers to inquire from John who he was, what was the answer of John? He was not Elijah. He was not the Christ. What else? He was not the prophet. So uh, who is the prophet referring here? Are you the prophet? Uh, now, uh, the Messiah. The Messiah, right? So, who was uh, prophesying that uh, during the time of Moses? Uh, we can find it in Deuteronomy 18, verse 15, when Moses said to the congregation of Israel, uh, okay, uh, we, will read, we will read it in Deuteronomy 18, verse 15. It says here, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet 
like me from your meats, from your brethren. Him you shall hear. So the prophet here refers to Jesus Christ. And this text is uh, being taken into consideration by our uh, Muslim brothers. You know, uh, I, have, uh, I, uh, I used to have a Muslim patient in our dialysis clinic. And he told me, brother, Muhammad is there in your Bible. It's written in the Bible. So he got a, uh, a Christian Bible and read it to me, 18 verse 5. And so I mean, uh, 18 verse 15. So when I read it, I, I did not uh, argue with him. Because as our lesson, uh, as I will discuss later, uh, when there is an argument that will arise, better not to argue, right? As what Philip uh, uh, will teach us. You about to stop? declaring the coming of Jesus Christ. But trying to make the people know that he himself is not the Christ, but he's just preparing the hearts and minds of people to meet the Messiah when he comes. Yes, that's right. So he quoted, uh, where can you find it? I don't remember now. It's in, uh, Brother Gilbert knows it. Sorry? The, uh, the quotation or the paraphrase that Brother Stubb mentioned. It's in Isaiah uh, 40, verses 1 to 5. Uh, he denied that he is Christ. He is not the prophet. He is not Elijah. But in Isaiah 40, 1 to 5, uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't have the uh, projector. I could not project it. Uh, Isaiah 40, 1 to 5. It says here, Comfort ye, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert, a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill brought low. Mm. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath, hath spoken. So, uh, I, I mean, um, John considered himself as the one crying in the wilderness, making the way straight for the coming of the Messiah, coming of the Lord. Uh, okay, uh, Sister Maureen has a question. Yeah, just wait for the. I just wanted to mention, I, I like here what he said. And he said, I am the voice of the crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. So make straight, yep, make straight the way of the Lord. And out of this preaching of John the Baptist, many repented of their sins. Uh, we're told that even those, uh, uh, those uh, many in Israel were baptized. And the religious leaders could not condemn John because what he was doing uh, did uh, a, good, uh, the, a good way of having the people repent of their sins and making their way straight to the Lord. Now, John mentioned that uh, he's just one crying the wilderness, makes uh, straight the way to the Lord. This, um, this, uh, this is like an anal analogy before, during the time of the kings, that before the king will go to a certain place because they don't have paved path uh, like as we have now. The servants will go ahead as the search party and wherever there is an access road where the king might pass, 
they will level it because the road, of course, will be bumpy and lots of holes. And so they will patch this road and make it uh, level so that the chariot of the king will pass smoothly. So that's how uh, John the Baptist uh, presented himself as the one crying out in the wilderness, uh, making sure that the people are ready to meet their Messiah, to meet Jesus as the king. Now, we all know that uh, the Jews at the time when Jesus was here on earth were seeking for a kingly Messiah because they are so fed up with the abuses and the misrule of the Romans. They want to uh, have that Messiah, the king, who will make Israel one of the greatest nation on earth, making Israel as it was during the time of King David and King Solomon. But uh, Jesus did not come here as a king. He came here first as one saving us from the power of sin, giving us grace, giving us the hope of salvation. Now, if we apply this uh, testimony of John the Baptist, that he is just somebody who is preparing the way of the Lord, how are we as Seventh Adventists can uh, replicate or can implement uh, what John have done, making the way straight? Can you uh, cite an example? Ah, okay, our sister here. Yeah, that, that's in the bottom part of our lesson. Good morning, church. Good morning, good morning. Um, your question, how can we? Yes. Can we, John lived in the wilderness, and then he went into the, I want to say where the people were. I can't say the city, but he went where the people were, and he, and he talked about making the way, talking about Jesus coming. Uh, do we live in the city or do we live in the country? What do, do we do the same when we go work in, live in the country, move to the city to work and reach the people? Because that's where the mass of the people are. What do we do as Seventh-day Adventists? That's a good question. Uh, applying what John have uh, done, preparing the way of the Lord. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. I think God's way is higher than ours. Part of the lesson, like you just said, the people, the Israelites, they were wait, waiting for a worldly king to yeah. give them freedom out of bondage from the Roman Empire. And let's say that happened. That's what, you know, they wanted. If that were to happen, then, you know, Christ would deliver them out of the Romans' hands, but just for a time. His ways are higher. He gave us something greater. He saved us eternally. So sometimes looking at the situation, we may feel that the best way is, you know, to the left. But God's way, he's saying to the right, we cannot see and we cannot understand why. But his way is always the best way. And he promised us that he's giving us a good future. He does not want to harm us, but to give us life more abundantly. Now, with John crying in the desert and preparing the way for Christ, in the same way, we're coming behind him. We don't have to go in a desert or in the city per se, but wherever it is that God has planted us, we can work in our own way for the Lord. Since, you know, Elizabeth was pregnant with him, he was born for that purpose. So let's speak to God and listen to the Holy Spirit to learn what our purpose is in life because he has a purpose for each one of us. Uh, thank you so much. Yes, um, we can be an effective witness for Jesus in our workplace, in the community we, uh, where we live. Now, uh, the, the question in the bottom part of our Sunday's lesson, my interpretation, yeah, my, uh, my interpretation of this is, all, is um, it's different. But all your answers are right. As I understand it, um, we're more 
skeptical about where we live. Mm -hmm. But Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And no matter where you live in the country, the city, or wherever, but always have the gospel in mind that everybody should hear it before the coming of Christ. And, um, and we, as a church, seem to very, be lackadaisical about this because we, it come like we're undercover. Let's go out and every, every Sabbath, don't have to wait on the pastor or everyone else. Every one of us have a work, a job to do, and let's do it well. Because the Holy Spirit abides in each and every one of us. And in order to keep him there, we must give him work to do. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Now, uh, my interpretation, oh, yeah, that's right. My interpretation also is like this. Um, who of you here are, is watching 3ABN? Any? Oh, it's like Sister Floor and 3ABN. And there was an episode before. Uh, we have Brother Nate. Uh, welcome back, Brother Nate. Brother Nate, uh, okay, welcome back. So there was an episode before, I think three or four months ago, that they featured AWR. Uh, and on that uh, episode, uh, they were presenting the work of the gospel in Papua New Guinea. He called it PNG for Christ. And I believe there were more than 300,000 people converted. The membership of the Adventist church was more or less 400,000. But they said that after the follow-up of those interested in the message, there were more than the, uh, the members that were converted, more than 400,000. So what they did um, before the, the crusade, they have a, a medical, dental, surgical outreach where many people were given uh, uh, treatment. Some of those who were blind because of cataracts they were able to see, and many uh, people, uh, uh, the, the dentist did a wonderful job uh, giving free dental checkups and also uh, giving dental care to the people. And we are told that thousands attended the seminar or the, the crusade. And there were also several Sunday keeping churches who became a Sabbath day keeper. Uh, watch it at 3 uh, AWR, AWR, uh, uh, Papua New Guinea for Christ. And that work have been also uh, observed, or we could say it was successful here in the U.S. Uh, you, you remember the, the general conference session that was held at uh, um, Texas, in San Antonio, Texas. Weeks before the general conference session, there was like a medical, dental, and surgical outreach. Many people were treated, and many of those uh, who were given uh, treatments uh, attended the session, and uh, we're told that hundreds uh, surrendered their life to Jesus. So it's, it's, uh, it's easy for people to receive the message of salvation when their uh, health needs are taken care of. So here at Pampano Church, uh, soon we will have that van operating, the, uh, the medical van, where we can do uh, checkups, checking the blood pressure and other health uh, services. So pretty sure we could uh, gain some uh, interest from the people around, right? And also are going house to house. Uh, Brother Stav will be doing it uh, maybe next month when the weather is not as hot as it is this time. So that's it for the testimony of John the Baptist. He was sent by God to prepare the way for Jesus. Now, uh, in Monday's lesson, the Lamb of God, when after Jesus was baptized, 
uh, he was taken by the Spirit to the wilderness where he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. When he came back to the place where John was baptizing, John could hardly recognize him. Uh, you, can, you could read it in the Serb Ages. But because of the Holy Spirit, he was able to see that it is, it is Jesus. And much, much has changed. The appearance of Jesus was changed because of his fasting uh, in the wilderness. And when Jesus passes by, he told the crowd, Behold the Son of God. And the people uh, at the time, they were acquainted with the Lamb because every day people uh, that go to the temple, the sanctuary, to offer sacrifices, they will present a Lamb. And the one that offered it will be the one to kill that Lamb. The blood taken out and sprinkled in the different furnitures. So they were acquainted with it. So when Jesus was there, behold the Lamb of God, Many people take notice, and out of it, the two disciples of John, who, uh, who were there, followed Jesus. And who were these two disciples? The two disciples of Jesus, when John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God. Uh, these two disciples had listened to John's message about the Christ, who would fulfill the Old Testament prophecies, about the coming Messiah. The disciples left John to follow Jesus, recognizing that Jesus was greater than John the Baptist, and that he was the fulfillment of John's message. Who were these two disciples? It was Andrew, and the other one, uh, John the evangelist that mentioned, but uh, it was he, John the evangelist. Now, when they followed Jesus, Jesus asked them, uh, this is in Tuesday's lesson, what do you seek? What did they say? They said to him, Rabbi or teacher, where are you staying? So you could see the response. What do you seek? Jesus said, and then they said, where are you staying? What did Jesus say? Yep, follow me. But Jesus said, come and see. So John did not mention uh, what was discussed, but pretty sure these two disciples were impressed regarding Jesus as a person, and also they believed that Jesus is the Lamb of God. Jesus is the Messiah. So, um, because of what they have learned from Jesus firsthand, Andrew invited who? Hmm? Yeah, Simon invited Simon, his brother. And when Simon came to Jesus, Jesus could read him personally, what will he become? And Jesus said, Thou art Cephas, meaning the stone, or Peter. You will be called Cephas, or Peter. So the thing here is that these two disciples of John the Baptist, when they were with Jesus, talking with Jesus, they were convinced that Jesus is the Messiah. And because of this, Andrew went to his brother to tell him that we have found the Messiah. And Simon Peter, because of the, the message or the this testimony of Andrew, came to Jesus and followed Jesus. Now, of course, John, he invited his brother James, and this became the nucleus of the disciples of Jesus. So the disciples of Jesus, it says here, if John and Andrew had possessed the unbelieving spirit of the priests and rulers, they would not have found us learners at the feet of Jesus. 
they would have come to him as critics to judge his words, but not so did his first disciples. They had responded to the Holy Spirit's call in the preaching of John the Baptist. Now they recognize the voice of the heavenly teacher. A divine illumination was shed upon the teaching of the Old Testament scriptures. The many-sided uh, themes of truth stood out in new light. I'll enjoy the desire of ages. So, what have we done as members of the Adventist Church and also as believers of Jesus? Have we witnessed with somebody? This is a question for you and me. Have I witnessed about Jesus to others? Because what happened to the witnesses at the time of Jesus, they share what they learned from Jesus. And out of this experience, they were able to draw people to Jesus. Uh, any comment? Okay, our sister here. Uh, okay. We can be witnesses for Jesus by telling others of the love of God and the way he has worked things out for us. The testimonies we have, we can tell others of the goodness of God, the things he has done, the many times he's come true for us. If we would just tell others of the things that God has done for us, then maybe they too would want to know who Jesus is and come and follow him. Amen. So, uh, uh, who else? Someone has said that actions speaks louder than words, right? So, it, it, can, it can happen. It can, uh, you might not be able to express it in words, but how you interact with others, you, your coworkers, they will notice it. In you. They, will, they will notice it. And if you will do something bad, they will easily recognize that this is not your usual self. Right? Okay, brother self. Yes, like I say, actions speak louder than words. And the way you act or react to other people will tell more about you and your relationship with Christ. Because, um, Case some point, there were two of us Christians working in this place. One was a Jehovah Witness and me, a Seventh-day Adventist. And they were there talking and giving all kind of rude jokes. And I come in the joke stop. <laughs> and not for me to hear. So when, when we um, react to people, especially people who are aggressive, we uh, react to them in a calm and several manner, they, it kind of cooled down the, the, the thing. As the Bible says, a kind answer turned it away right, but grievous words stir up anger. Thank you so much, Brother Stav. Words of wisdom. Uh, we could always learn from Brother Stav. All right? So, it's, it's, it's hard. If we have the tendency to react uh, uh, not in a Christian way, many could see that. And it takes uh, everyday prayer of surrendering yourself to the power of the Holy Spirit that could change your life. Because uh, we could see that the Holy Spirit is working in you through the change of your character. It's not easy. And it's a struggle that each of us should, uh, should uh, place in the feet of Jesus allowing the Holy Spirit to reign in us. We have to pray it every day because without God's prayer, without prayer, without the Holy Spirit living in us, we could not witness effectively uh, for Jesus. Philip and Nathaniel. So, how was Philip became a disciple of Jesus? So who is Philip? Uh, we could say Philip is one of the disciples of Jesus, but uh, how he came, uh, how he became a disciple of Jesus? 
So uh, Jesus was uh, Jesus went to Galilee and he found Philip and he just said, "Follow me." Yep, follow me. So Philip right away followed Jesus. And because of his witness, uh, because he knew that Jesus is, is, is uh, the Messiah, he went and invited his friend, Nathaniel, right? He invited. So we could also take a, a, a lesson from, from here. Now, Philip uh, calls Jesus the one Moses and the prophets wrote about and adds the name Jesus of Nazareth. His reference to Nazareth sets off a sharp reaction from his friend. So he invited okay. his friend. May I say uh, something? Nathaniel. Okay? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, um, P, um, Philip, Philip saw Jesus was passing and he decided to follow him and um he he said to him you know you are the son of god i don't quite remember everything what i had read but he said he would go and call his friend so nathaniel was his friend so he, he told his friend nathaniel that come and see you know jesus this man that is a messiah and uh, um he told he also told philip that he also told Nathaniel that he was from um, Nazareth. Nazareth. And then um, Na um, Nathaniel, he looked at him and he would say, Nazareth, I'm in Nazareth. Can anything good come from that? Because that was a bad area. That was a bad section. You know? And so he said, he didn't even stop to explain to him. He said, come, come and see for yourself. That's the best, best part of it. Uh, Philip did not argue with his friend, Nathaniel. Now, uh, we can learn uh, something from here uh, about prejudice. So, are we proud that we are members of Pampano Church? You might ask, where is Pampano Church? Yep. Does anything good come out of Pampano Church? What will you say? Of course, yes. We are... Uh, we are followers of Jesus. So, uh, Philip did not argue. Because Nazareth uh, is not like uh, Jerusalem or some places in Judea where the established uh, Jewish faith is located. Nazareth is in Galilee where the, the populations are mixed. Gentiles and uh, and Jews, so they could not uh, see, or uh, they, they could not say something good in Nazareth. Uh, I have sis uh, Brother Stud and Sister Dunet. Okay, we have, we have Sister Dunet first, then Brother Stud. What is important to note here, though, is that Nathaniel, even though he had a prejudice against the city of Nazareth, his friendship was greater than his prejudice, and he went and saw. And Jesus, in contrast to how um, Nathaniel responded to the city of Nazareth, said really good things about Nathaniel, so he really saw that he was the Christ. Thank you so much. Yes, um, because of their friendship. And second, Philip didn't argue. He said, come and see. The same uh, invitation uh, that Jesus gave to the first two disciples, come and see. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Um, the reason for that is that there was a Roman garrison in Nazareth. And the, um, the soldiers, Roman soldiers, go around and just do what they want to the people. So it was a kind of a ghetto. So when, when, they, um, when the guy asked, can any good thing out of Nazareth? Yes, there is. And that's, a, that's an object lesson. That regardless of how bad you are, 
Some good thing can come out of you through Jesus Christ. Yes, that's right. Even how bad we are, if we accept Jesus, will we change? Okay, well, Brother Gilbert. Um, this morning, my devotion, I was reading as a child on the Desire of Ages. And you know that Ellen White says at the beginning of that chapter that Christ not sure was a rosy life. He could have been with courts of kings and royalty, but he chose to be born in Nazareth. It would be like a project to identify with us. So it's, it's a testament no matter where you are where you are from, no matter it be a ghetto, whether it be um, a good serene area, Christ is able to make you live the life of Christ. I mean live the life of to live the life that Christ wants you to live in Christ. Thank you. Yes. If you have Jesus, I mean, where we come from, uh, they could see a change in us and they will be convinced that we are a follower of Jesus. We are, yep, we are disciples of Jesus. Um, we have barely a minute and we'll go to the last part, the testimony of Nicodemus. Who was Nicodemus? A member of the Sanhedrin, one of the Pharisee, and he was convinced that Jesus is sent by God because of the signs that Jesus did, the, the miracles that Jesus did, he was convinced that Jesus is a prophet or a messenger from God. Um, at first, he didn't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. But later on, uh, according to the Desire of Ages, after uh, the disciples, or I mean, after Jesus was, was crucified, and he related the interview with Jesus to John, John uh, the, the evangelist. And out of this interview came that wonderful promise text in the Bible. Uh, what text is that? Out of the interview uh, of, that Nicodemus had with Jesus came this wonderful promise, which is found in John 3.16. For God, what? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And uh, with that, we'll close our Sabbath school review. I hope that uh, you benefited from this review. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you so much for the gift of salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray, Father God, that as we interact with others, we will always remember that Jesus has died for us and that we can be as effective messengers if we have we live the life of Jesus. This thing I pray in his name. Amen.